Good news, psychedelics work. Bad news, psychedelics work and might not be profitable for Big Pharma, so it might be years before we see the results. Is that right? Crow fart. I don't think it's possible for one man to love four and a half million people more than I love you. Let's get on this journey of awakening together. If you're in the UK between January and May, come see me prancing about, talking about life and God and spirituality and politics. There's a link in the description if you fancy it. In the meantime, let's understand how Big Pharma operates. Recent research suggests that psychedelics has a profound positive impact on mental health. The problem is that Big Pharma aren't interested in developing drugs that may cure illnesses because it eats into their profits. There's a fundamental problem that Big Pharma has to face, that health is an ethical and moral issue and the pharmaceutical industry is the pharmaceutical industry and they have to make money. They have to treat human beings as markets. Let's have a look at this story around psychedelics, see what's true, see where the complexity and contradictions come with such an issue. This is by Rick Doblin, founder and executive director of the Multidisciplinary Association for Psychedelic Studies. Survivors of PTSD may struggle to stay connected in their work, families and communities. They often live with symptoms like insomnia, hypervigilance and isolation. These commonly lead to substance use disorders depression, chronic pain or heart problems, yet most of the available treatments provide symptom relief for only about half of the people with the diagnosis, with even fewer people experiencing remission. Do you see sometimes like emergent paradigms, like so with Afghanistan, the aim is not to win the war, the aim is to sustain the war. With mental health, the aim is not to win the war or solve the problem, it's to sustain the problem. Again, this is an economically underwritten system. If what you need to do is glean profit from markets, you don't want to solve a problem. You know about built-in obsolescence. You know, If you sell people a washing machine and that's it, they've got a washing machine forever, you just killed a customer. In May 2021, Nature Medicine published the results of the most advanced trial of psychedelic therapy to date. In our phase three trial of MDMA-assisted therapy for PTSD, 88% of participants who received MDMA in conjunction with trauma-focused therapy experienced a clinically significant reduction in symptoms. I've had a lot of mental health problems over the course of my life. I didn't tell you because I didn't want to worry you. But like, wouldn't you like that? 67% reduction in symptoms. Participants no longer met criteria for a PTSD diagnosis, which is another way of saying it cured them. Many participants reported MDMA-assisted therapy helped them address the root cause of their trauma for the first time. Well, isn't that amazing? My own therapeutic journey, albeit a 12-step one, which means it's, uh, you know, psychotherapeutic and support group oriented as opposed to bloody pharmacological necessarily because it's abstinence-based in my case, deals though with the same principle. What's caused this? Why do you need to eat that much food, watch that much porn, have that much sex, take that much crack, heroin, drink that much booze? What is it? What is it you're trying to deal with? If you don't ever deal with that, you know, and people don't generally want to deal with it because it's hard as the individual and as a, as a system, you don't want to deal with that because people are bloody good consumers when they're addicts because you're always looking for, what am I going to do? Subscribe to more channels. All right, I'll subscribe to Disney. All right, I'll subscribe to Stars. There's a Beatles documentary. All right, I'll subscribe to that. I'm subscribing to everything. I'm smothered in subscriptions. Ketamine studies have shown promise for chronic suicidal tendencies tendencies, PTSD symptoms and depression. Legal ketamine clinics which pair therapy with the drug can play a key role in maximising the benefits and reducing the risks of the psychedelic experience. Psilocybin assisted therapy is a breakthrough therapy for depression. Ibogaine may be an effective treatment for opioid use disorder. I don't know if any of you follow Daniel Pinchbeck and his books Breaking Open the Head and 2012 and all this. He wrote a lot about these various psychedelic therapies, although they weren't really thought of as therapies then. They were thought of as sort of shamanic experiences. And it stands to reason, doesn't it, that cultures that use plant medicines in order to maintain and create a connection with the sacred are healthier than cultures like ours, where we are given self-subscribed placebos in order to medicate the lack or absence of sacredness and meaning. TV screens, magazines, caffeine, all these things we 
treat ourselves with in order to prevent ourselves, anesthetize ourselves, distract ourselves from the fact that we're not able to have a sacred, sublime experience anymore. So it's no surprise that psychedelics that can access aspects of your dormant consciousness, awaken them and switch them on, are having a profound curative effect. In fact, four separate systematic reviews have been published this year highlighting the potential of psychedelic assisted therapies for those conditions and more. End of life care, brain injury, neurodegenerative disorders, mood disorders, smoking cessation and addiction or dependence. Dozens of studies make a compelling case for rapid expansion of research into psychedelic assisted therapies for serious mental health conditions. I reckon this is true, this. I feel that this is one of those um, stories that if we were to explore it in good faith, if the intention were, how do we make the world beautiful? How do we make people happy? How do we create good communication? The problem is, is that our media is so full of bad faith and disingenuous tripe that you forget it's possible to have a conversation that's actually sort of pragmatic. Like, oh, wow, psychedelics work. Why don't we explore that? You know, oh, wow, people don't communicate properly. Could we create forums and spaces where people with different views could come in? There's no intention. Everything that seems like an error and a mistake is, in fact, the system doing what it's supposed to do, as we are fond of saying here. It's not a bug, it's a feature. Oh, that's weird. This drug keeps people addicted to it forever and never provides a solution. Well, that would be quite good, I suppose, if you were seeking to make a profit from that drug. I mean, geez, is that right even to think of it in those terms? You know, that's how it works, isn't it? Evidence indicates that psychedelic use is associated with pro-social, personal growth benefits, including increased nature relatedness, potentiating conflict resolution, and sustaining compassion among first responders. Indigenous communities around the globe have used psychedelics in spiritual ceremony and healing for millennia. This is where one of our cultural myths, the myth of progressivism, gets in our bloody way. We always think, no, but look at how great society is. We've got all this stuff. It's brilliant. How do you feel inside? Well, like I'm in my own life, out of sheer misery and a total lack of meaning. Yeah, so overall then, is it great? Jeff Bezos has got a cock rocket. Is it helping you? No. There's more than one way to measure progression and more than one way to measure a cock rocket. Conversely, the well-documented devastation of the war on drugs has been responsible for untold trauma. But is the legalisation and regulation of all substances reversing the course on the war on drugs too dangerous? Simply... No, <laughs> it's more dangerous not to. That war on drugs was bloody stupid. You can't just tell people not to do the thing they've discovered in order to solve the problems. How about deal with the problems? Ah, it's costly and expensive and it disrupts the interests of the powerful. So just punish the people at the end of the chain that are taking drugs in order to cope. Far better to investigate the true value of psychedelics. Decades of research and far more extensive use outside clinical settings demonstrate that the risks of drugs for most people are generally short-term and manageable through compassionate risk reduction measures. For those who become dependent on drugs, treatment on demand is a more effective intervention than criminalization. People who are most marginalized by society are often those who are most traumatized, have least access to diagnosis, and even less access to adequate treatment. We envision a day when psychedelics will be more than a last ditch treatment. They will be a catalyst for mass mental health. Of course, the problem will be that if you grant people access to processes, you know, whether they're therapeutic, in a psychedelic way or merely in a behavioural, cognitive way, people will begin to awaken. And healthy people don't want to participate in sick systems. Sick people will participate in sick systems. It resonates with them. The emotions that we feel, if we see them mirrored through our systems, we're like, oh, yeah, yeah, I feel angry and disenfranchised and pissed off and alone. Once people start awakening, going, oh my God, the world's beautiful. I'm only here for a short while. It's important that I spend my time being filled with love and finding purpose and mission and joy and glory. Like, that's not the description of a good consumer. So I'm not suggesting that these are the explicit directives of the systems that dominate our consciousness and govern our lives. But that is the implicit agenda. You can't awaken people because awoken people don't cooperate. Over the last five years, medicinal psychedelics have made incredible strides in the face of strict regulations and stigma. Meanwhile, existing drug therapies for depression, addiction and PTSD have failed to produce real and lasting results, which is better for profit. Roughly two-thirds of US veterans suffering from PTSD have reported dissatisfaction with current treatments. Two-thirds of Americans with depression don't even bother with treatment because common medications are largely ineffective, plus they're depressed. Antidepressants take weeks or months to kick in, if they do at all. Yeah, that's always disappointing, isn't it? Oh, I've got to take this for two weeks and all that happens is you put a bit of weight on and go a bit bloaty and nothing really changes. 
Even then, they come with a daunting list of side effects, bloaty, and they also add to the risk of addiction. But it gets worse. Antidepressants like Trintilix come with a warning for suicidal thoughts and actions. This Trintilix, does it work? Yeah, mostly. Any side effects? One or two? What like? You know, thinking about ending your own life? Yeah, I do, because I'm depressed. This makes that a bit worse. Ooh. So does Zoloft and Xanax. Why do all these drugs sound like baddies in Flash Gordon and Marvel movies? Trintalex is here with Zoloft and Xanax. You're not getting my bejeweled glove. Both addictive medications. These treatments are meant to ease depression and anxiety, not to exasperate them. And conventional drugs like these come with a life sentence of permanent use. We might imagine that Big Pharma would invest in more effective humane treatments for mental illness. No, I wouldn't. I wouldn't even imagine that. But in reality, multinational pharmaceutical companies appear to have abandoned the forward movement on mental health treatments altogether. Generic competition has strengthened to the point where earnings for the firms that make these drugs are a shadow of the past. Basically, what they're saying is, is they're out of patent, them drugs, so there's no profit in it, so they don't bother with it anymore. By 2019, the worldwide sales of the antidepressant market leaders will be half that achieved in 2004. They are also controversial and expensive to research. Some of the bigger industry players decided it was easier to make money in oncology or diabetes, so they weren't investing, says Harry Tracy, who tracks developments in drug treatments for psychiatric problems. I mean, that's so merciless. Okay, we're moving on to cancer and diabetes. Oh, what, because you want to help people with cancer and diabetes? Oh, yeah. That's why right, cancer and diabetes. Why would they choose not to invest in proven psychedelic therapeutic medicines? The reason is that Big Pharma has little actual interest in curing people. A minimal dosage, long-term effective treatment model for mental health disorders would mean losing the cornerstone of their business, returning customers. Bloody hell, they need returning customers. So solutions that absolutely draw a line under the problem are not what they're looking for. That's an interesting thing to bear in mind. Huge pharmaceutical corporations rely on sick people remaining sick to their own detriment. In addition, Big Pharma is also facing a patent cliff as many of their patents are starting to expire. With no new development for mental health treatments, the industry is losing revenue, customers and public confidence. Well, hopefully something will turn up to help those heroes in the Big Pharma industry. Fingers crossed for those guys. As you know, I've got no opinion on contemporary events, but when you see how the ideology of Big Pharma functions in the space of psychedelics, research taking place over years, no results, interest withdrawn from certain treatments of mental health because it's not profitable, it's easy to understand how there could be scepticism, if not downright cynicism, around some of the events of the last 18 months when suddenly solutions appear, bam, 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 overnight. Obviously, I want to live in a world where if something's proven to work, or even if some experimentation suggests that it will work, I think that we should proceed optimistically in order to create the best world possible for as many people as possible, creating as much freedom, autonomy, and collective authority for as many folk as possible. And if psychedelics, ketamine, MDMA, all the drugs I work so hard to give up are going to be part of the solution, then we should bring it on. But that's just my opinion. Let me know what you think in the comments below. I bet you've got loads of personal experiences with mental health, I'm not judging you, and loads of experiences with drugs, I'm not judging you. Let me know what they are. Give us a thumbs up, subscribe, turn on that notification bell so we can stay in constant connection. If you enjoyed this video, have a look at this one. Similar topics, similar ideas and themes. Why don't you learn to meditate? The Awakening Side channel is there for you. Please subscribe to my mailing list. It's just one click away. I'll tell you what I'm reading, what I'm thinking about, what I'm up to. And if you're in the UK in 2022, between Jan and May, come see me live. There's a link in the description for that too. Stay free.